we need to get used to being in the presence of God. I remember when I was, um, you know, when you meet your business partner, you shake hands, right? And uh, when, if you're in the military, you see a senior officer, you salute. But when you come into the presence of God, you worship. That's the best place that we can ever have as a believer, and that's to worship God. I'd like to bring your attention to the bulletin. You know, for the longest time, we have been praying about how to um, mobilize the whole church to reach out to the lost. We are doing very well with the uh, women of faith uh, using uh, the platform of the expatriate, uh, the TC woman to engage the greater community of ladies in the, in, in, in the market pla- in in the marketplace and also in the neighborhood. But it is difficult f- to mobilize the men. <laughs> uh, of course, the professional ladies too. But uh, I, I think we, we have something in, in, God has placed something in our hearts right now. It's going to be birth of this coming uh, September uh, from the 6th to the 8th. On the 6th of September, please mark down the dates, it's an important date. On the 6th of September is the uh, Shanghai Christian Business Leaders Forum. The 6th is a TEC event. Uh, some of you will be engaged. Uh, we will be approaching you individually to, to help to be mentors. We have entitled this Leaders for Leaders. Uh, there will be several speakers in this forum. Uh, one, one of them is actually uh, Yen Sturason. Sturason. I'm sure you have known, uh, heard him preach during the last uh, Christmas uh, gala. There will also be a lady joining us. She was formerly in ICS. Uh, but she has been posted to, to Singapore right now. She's uh, a Christian, a mature Christian. She is the president of the German uh, Chamber of Commerce in Singapore. She is looking after, journeying with about 1,500 German, German company CEO, and uh, she's a very staunch, staunch Christian. She'll be coming here to also uh, be one of the speakers to talk about how to be leaders to leaders. Uh, you don't have to be a CEO to, 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 to be present. You can, I mean, as long as you are someone working in the corporate world, you're welcome to join us on those days. But there will be brothers and sisters in our midst who will be invited to mentor uh, the leaders uh, in, in, in the corp- corporate world because what we want to emphasize is to be blessed holistically. How are we supposed to uh, be uh, prospering uh, spiritually, emotionally, uh, psychologically and uh, physically. How do we end well as leaders? So kindly, uh, right now, the uh, 6th of September to the 8th of September, pen it down. You can invite your local friends to join us on the 6th because it's open for everyone. Uh, it's a TEC event. But on the 7th, it will be a, a Christian event, uh, mainly for our church members. So uh, please jot down the dates. Then we will be having uh, Dr. R.T. Kendall with us on the 16th and 17th of November. Dr. R.T. Kendall can't wait to come back to Shanghai to be with us. He's about 88 or 89 years old. <laughs> but he longed to be with us uh, to impart the Word of God to us. So uh, you know ICS is very much into uh, equipping you with the Word and also balancing it with the work of the Holy Spirit. So kindly uh, note down those dates and... Um, I'm sure the Lord will uh, bless the activities that we'll be having in the coming months. Oh, before I forget, my wife told me to let you know that for those of you who have not collected this, uh, please do so after the service today. I think there's still about uh, slightly less than half available. So if you have not picked it up, please do so. Uh, the armor of God, uh, we, have, we will be finishing the last session uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, but today, we have a guest speaker. Uh, he is none other than Pastor Paul or Olinius. He's accompanied by his wife, Teresa. If Teresa can stand, both of you can stand. Let's welcome them. Um, Pastor Paul Ornelius and his, and his wife pastor the Ventuna Church in uh, Stockholm. And he's also the leader of the Pentecostal National Network of International Churches in Sweden. I heard that uh, all these international churches are pastored by missionaries from all over the world because there is a huge migration of people to Sweden and Sweden has become a very secularized nation 
that uh, as a post-Christian nation, uh, they need to be safe. Yeah. And God is using the foreigners to come and create a revival in their midst. So without much ado, let us welcome Pastor Paul Onilis. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good, good. It's so good to be in Shanghai and meet these all lovely people and, uh, and this family of believers uh, gathering here. Pastor Daniel and Doreen, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, it's been a few great days. Yesterday we had a great seminar looking at um, our mission in the work life to be good uh, uh, gardeners, cultivating your garden, that was the theme. So if you want to look it up, you can see the recordings, I think, um, it's available. One good thing with, with, with Shanghai so far is that you actually can open up your, your lid. In Europe, they've come up with a rule that it has to stuck to the, to the bottle. So you can never really drink from the bottle. So all nations in Europe, we are suffering, but not here. Uh, so I'm... Um, Oh, enjoying my drink. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's really good to be here. Um, and um, greetings also from our kids. We have um, uh, twins, uh, a boy and a girl. They're 15. They wish they could be here when they see the photos. <laughs> and our boy is a nine years um, Caspian. Uh, so we have uh, this wonderful family and we are celebrating this weekend 21 years of marriage in Shanghai so that's um, wonderful to do that as well um, and um, before I open the word could, uh, I would like Teresa just come to pray uh, and just uh, pray for our hearts to be open for what the Spirit of the Lord is is speaking to us today Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's pray. Yes. Thank you that you are here with us, God, in our midst. Thank you that you are the center of our, of our being. Thank you that you are the center of our heart. Thank you that you are the center of your church, the head of your church. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you that you are Lord, Lord of Lords, king of kings mm. and i thank you that your house is a house of prayer for all people yeah. from all nations mm. and i thank you for the privilege to be here today as believers mm. and and to worship and pray and to receive your word mm. and be here mm. on the very east mm. uh, coast of china mm. as on this morning mm. and we will be like the first people worshiping you this brand new day and then People from all the world will praise you and worship you this day. So I thank you for this day that you have created. It's a new day today. And we bless this day and we thank you. We receive what you will do. We are glad. We rejoice about this day and what you are doing and that what you will speak to us today. So I thank you that you will speak deeply today to our hearts, to the core of our being, and that you, your words are truth and your word is the spirit uh, and uh, a sword, the sword of the spirit that will minister deep to our hearts with truth and freedom. So thank you for your word. We bless uh, your words of truth today to speak to us and that you will encourage us deeply. Please encourage my brothers and sisters here today as only you can do. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit. And we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. Mm, amen. You can take that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and also when I um, look at the people who've been here ministering, like John Sturdeson, good friends of our, ours, and um, also I know Marco uh, Strömberg was here, also a good friend, and Olaf, and also Archie Kendall is a good friend. So it's nice to be with friends. Um, and, um, and back home in, in Valentina, in Stockholm, where we pastor, uh, it was nice just the other week, uh, some 
uh, Chinese people turn up in our church. And it happened so that there was a, a, a Swedish boy who have a Chinese friend, and he brought it to our youth club, kids club on Fridays. We have open for the society to come, and one of our uh, uh, families, a boys from the families of the church, brought a Chinese friend. And in the next uh, Friday, that Chinese boy brought his friend. Um, and uh, in this, um, in, uh, I forgot his name now, so, Shuyu, Shuyu coming this Friday, and I was there and, and hanging out with the kids, and this boy comes close to me, and he, and he pulls my jacket or my, my coat, and, and he's like, don't know how to phrase him, so, what, what about God, God, you know, he's like, so drawn by, by the love of God. So he's, he's trying to phrase his question, and then we play and have fun during the evening, and then we after, uh, always uh, f- finish with uh, some stories, or gospel stories or testimonies. And he has so many questions. Um, and then we sit, sitting down, and, 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 he, and I talk to him about Jesus, asking him, would you like to, to know Jesus? Would you like to invite Jesus in your life? He's 10 years of age. Uh, 11, yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's good to have a wife that correct you. So 11, to be specific. And this boy, we pray together, and he invites Jesus into his life. Next uh, Friday, he, he brings his, his mother to church. She doesn't have one single word of Swedish. And she's there in the kitchen and, and helping out, and we try to communicate through the boy. Next Sunday, they are in church, and he has also brought his friend Leo. Uh, this is Chinese people in Sweden. So God is drawing people. You know that? Everywhere, always, there is an activity going on from the heart of the Father where He draws people. Because He loves people. He created us. He loves us. There is nowhere, no, no place, no people He has abandoned. But He loves us and He draws us. And He wants to catch our attention. And he wants us to be ready for the return of the king is coming soon. And that's the theme for today, the return of the king. Are you ready to meet your king? And it's a call for us as believers. And it's a call for every human being to live wisely in this present age. Um, So just starting off with, with words from Jesus in chapter 24 of Matthew's gospel. Uh, is here and uh, we, we just start there and then we will go on into chapter 25 where really Jesus gives us three stories uh, or parables par- um, parables where he shows us how to live wisely in this present age um, so but let's read the word, words of Jesus from verse 32 uh, 42 therefore stay awake for you do not know on what day our Lord is coming 44, therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and the wise servant, whom his master has set over his household, to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. Therefore, you also must, must be ready. Faithful and wise servant in this present time and age. Because we do not know when he is coming back. We don't know the hour, the day. And um, I'm thinking to myself when I read this. Hey, I want to be among the faithful ones. Hey, I want to be among the, the wise ones. I think all in this room, believer or not, you would consider yourself to be a wise person, don't you? <laughs> or you feel like a fool? <laughs> I don't know. But I think we would like to be the wise ones. So before I just go into the, the deeper text in, in chapter 25, just give a little bit of a backdrop. If you are new to the game and new to the story of Jesus, um, new to the Bible, because the return of the king... Uh, I don't know if you have, do you like Lord of the Rings? Anyone like Tolkien? <laughs> um, okay, so I have, I have some friends here. Mm, love you, love you. <laughs> I am a, I'm a Tolkien fan. I, I listen and see the movies. I, I love the imagery because it speaks deeper to me. Anyway, 
But to understand this language, we need to go back. Because God created this world. The story of the Bible. The story of the Bible gives us an explanation where everything comes from. Because nothing comes from nothing. Everything comes from somewhere or someone. How deep the science trying to figure out or everything just accidentally came up. But simple logic tells us that everything is coming from something or someone. How deep philosophically or scientifically you go, you will end up with something or someone as a source of everything. And the Bible tells us who this someone is. In the early days, in the early beginning, God spoke a word and there were light. And you could... It may be interpreted as the science says, well, there was a big bang of light. When the word of God spoken, there is worlds created. There is a universe exploding of life. But this God is not just a superpower creating. He is a personal God. And he's a loving God. And he created not just the universe in the bigger sense, but he created the, the micro-universe. And he created the cells in your body down to the very neutrons of the atom, to the very quarks, to the very non-defined elements of the atom. He's the creator of it all. And in the midst of that, it's you and I. Every single person here, every 1.4 billion of Chinese people in this nation are uh, loved by God, created by God, designed by God, known by God. And the Father is searching every heart on this earth today. And he's searching your heart. Maybe you don't know him. Maybe you know him as loving. Maybe you know him as a distant God who doesn't care. But the story tells us in this precious book that God not just left the world, but loved the world. So much so that he wanted to show himself for us in the very person of a human being, namely Jesus Christ. He is not just abandoning us as we have abandoned him. Because that would have happened and is happening. God created its beautiful world and he set us here to rule the world together with him but what happened and what happens in our lives is that say no nah, god i don't want you in, the, in my picture i think i got this yeah i got this i have a better way i have a highway uh, my way is the highway i do it my way as frank sinatra was singing right I do it my way. But that way slides away from the purposes of God and it slides into darkness. It goes away from the very purpose of God and his life for us. And this aches in the heart of God. This burns in the heart of God because he sees his precious people turning away from him and saying, I can do it my way. And I don't know how you view the world and how you think we're doing. Partially, things are, might be good. But when I look, I see war. When I look, I see darkness. When I see people suffering. When I see even into my heart and others' hearts, I see the consequences of sin. I see people hurting. I see brokenness. And what about all this? Because the facade can be really nice, can it not? Yesterday we were at a nice restaurant celebrating our <laughs> anniversary. And you look at the beautiful, you know, Shanghai by night skyline in this beautiful facade. Wonderful. But I wonder what pain is there behind? What emptiness is there behind? What loss of peace is there behind? What other idols and things are owning the hearts of men and women? What do God do about this? Well, he steps into the picture. He becomes one of us, right? Jesus Christ. He is God. He is the creator stepping into the creation. Huh. 
becoming like us, walking like us, clothing, maybe not like a suit like this, but anyway, something, clothes, shoes, and he's getting dirty on this ground. Why? Because he loves you. Brother in the back, sister in the back, all the way to the front, because he loved you, because he wanted you close. He wanted to be one with you. He wanted to be fellowshipping with you. He wanted to draw you close to the heart of the Father, as Pastor was sharing this morning, the experiencing, the experience of being loved by the Father and worship Him and love Him back. It's the essence of our being. It's the deepest need and longing for every human being. And this was Jesus pulling us, drawing us, welcoming us back into the love of the Father. So on this precious cross, He is not just walking our lives, but He is dying our death. He is taking upon Himself the darkness we created apart from Him, the separation of sin, the death itself. It was put upon Him. He says, the creation cannot fix itself. It's only the Creator that can fix the creation. Yes? It's only the Creator who can fix because the, the problem was so deep and profound. We were so broken, we could not find our way back. We couldn't heal ourselves. And you, my friend, you cannot heal your own heart. You cannot heal your own relationship with the Father yourself. Is it okay if I preach? <laughs> Preaching, telling you, sharing you the passion of God. For you, and this is where he took it upon himself. That's why he died to bring you back and bring the whole of humanity back if possible. And through the cross, he died there, but it wasn't the end because God is stronger than death, God is stronger than your darkness, your curses, your sickness, the thing that is holding you, the thing that is bothering you, pushing you down, pushing you down. He took that and he rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. Our Lord is risen. He's not dead, my friend. God in Christ is alive. And he broke the power of death and sin. So human heart don't have to be under its limitation anymore. You don't have to be under sin. You don't have to be under the oppression of the enemy. You don't have to bow to him because he rose from the dead. And when he did so, he confirmed the after the ultimate victory of a darkness, sin, enemy, devil, whatever you name him, he's defeated. And for everyone who receives him, receives forgiveness of sin, liberation of sin, liberation of darkness, and are not yet, are not anymore under the power of sin and darkness. Your business, your work life, your family doesn't have to be under the pressure of sin and curses anymore. He died not just for your sins, but he died for your business, if you like. Why? Because it's part of the creation he redeemed. Amen? He restored everything in the heavens and on the earth through the cross, through the blood, because he wanted it all back. So as we as gardeners step into our gardens and take responsibility and plead the blood of Jesus and the victory and we use the keys of heaven, we can liberate garden of the garden from the oppressor and from the sin power and from the curses. Amen? All right. So this is the backdrop. Jesus is coming back. Are you ready to meet him? Because when he comes back, he will bring all of those who wants to be part of his kingdom of heaven. He's not going to force you into his kingdom. He's asking you to leave your own way and repent from that way to darkness and death. And be led by Jesus himself and follow him on the journey to life. With Jesus as your best friend, with God as your father, and the Holy Spirit as your guide and power in your life.
a new life as a disciple. That's what we offer people, a kingdom life, a new life. Not just forgiveness of sins, but a completely new life. Starting with a born again experience of the heart that it gets freed and now you can walk and live differently. That's the gospel we need to preach and we need to tell the world that they can come back to God. God has not left them. God has come close. The word is near. The question is, would you like him to be your Lord and Savior? Would you receive him? All right. Okay, so let's go. Now, if you're, when we are on the journey as a believer, as disciples, Jesus gives us three stories in the chapter of, um, in, of Matthew's gospel, chapter 25. Are you good so far? Back there, you okay? <laughs> so Jesus, as we said in 25, chapter 24, sorry, he says, who are the faithful? Who want to be the wise servants? And then he brings us these three stories. Oil in our lamps, stewarding what has been entrusted us, and thirdly, serving the poor or the needy. And the first one is oil in our lamps. This is um, a parable from Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. It says that the kingdom of heaven would be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to be with the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. Ouch. So they forgot something on the road. They forgot something when they left home. And I'm just thinking, Lord, I don't want to live empty in my lamp. I want to live full of his Holy Spirit oil in my life. To do this journey, to follow Jesus, the only way, only way to follow Jesus is to have oil in your lamp. No oil, we end up foolish. Oil, we have to come back. Places like this, Sunday has to be a part of our rhythm because we need to be refilled. We need to be reminded of Jesus did for us. We need to be anchored in the gospel so we can live the gospel. We cannot live the gospel without oil in our lamps. Amen. We cannot do the mistake like we do in Sweden. Sometimes the church, even the church, have forgot to refuel, to be refueled with oil. We have churches, but lo le uh, lack of fire. That's why it's not the society's fault that we go in secularized ways. I say that's the absence of the church and the absence of oil in the church that creates that situation. That's what, why we want to connect with the international, for, I mean, the missionaries of all nations and backgrounds come to Sweden, come to Europe, be part of, of the renewal of the continent, re Re, re christianize this continent once more in Sweden. That's one of my, one, one, my responsibilities to connect with all these streams in Stockholm alone. We have a hundred new churches planted in the last 15 years. A hundred in Sweden, there's 300, and, and, and there is just more coming because God is doing something in the Europe continent and in Sweden and in Scandinavia. Praise God. He has not abandoned even that part of the world. <laughs> and he is here as well. Because you guys are here. You were sent here for a reason. And my plead and at the plead of Jesus, don't live this life without the oil renewed and refueled regularly. Every day coming to the word. And let him speak to you. Don't fulfill your Christian duty. No one needs your Christian duty. But you need to come to the word of God and allow the Father to speak through his spirit to your heart. Because there is power in his word. He can create the universe, remember, by the power of his word. Can he not speak into your heart and create life? Can he not create life in your business? Can he not create new things in your world? Of course he can. 
The question is, if are we coming back? Are we, are we refueled by the power of His Word and His Spirit? Amen? Uh, last year, we, we, uh, we were driving up to the mountains in Sweden. And, um, uh, and we had an electrical vehicle, an EV car. And uh, bless them when uh, you're not having 20 minus degrees. And a long distance in Sweden because there are so few charging places. Uh, so in, in Europe and in Sweden, you know, everyone's like, yeah, buy these EVs. So, yeah, but where are we going to charge them? <laughs> ah, all right. So, so now we are catching up. But we are going to the mountains and, and we're having our s- small EV car going up there. And in, I'm quite confident because I've checked the charging stops. But I'm quite a new EV car driver. So <laughs> the, the minus plus the highway speed, <laughs> my battery is like, <laughs> like no, <laughs> I had a plan for this. Um, and we get this, what we call charging anxiety. <laughs> you, you have that in China, or, or you have a charging stop, you know, every corner, maybe. Uh, uh, but <laughs> there's a, you're looking at that battery. I thought it would, you know, hold the whole way to my direction. Anyway, so we are in, on our way to a mountain in, in the cabin, and suddenly when I'm sitting there in the middle of the evening night, seeing that, suddenly it's like, whoo, poo, it's like, battery goes, whoosh, and I'm like, honey, we, we're not going to make it. <laughs> We're not, we're not going to make it. It's a whoosh, and I'm like slowing down, really slow. No, it doesn't help. So, okay, we need to go back. We need to find somewhere to charge. So, you know, we tried to find it. We knew there was one place. And I'm like, Lord, <laughs> please make it work. <laughs> because the funny thing is that we have charging places, but, you know, Half of them are broken as well. So, you, so you, never, you never know. So you have to have extra plans for everything. Anyway, so short in the story, we go there, and I'm like praying, oh, Lord, let this charging stop work. And we come out, the family's there, and, we, and I put in the, um, the charger, and it's working. <laughs> so thank you, Jesus. So the power is on, and we take a break as we EV car drivers does, <laughs> we, we take breaks, <laughs> we drive, um, and, and we get out from the car, and, and we see this, I hope it's, it's going to show here as well, we're like, God, your creation is so beautiful, and it was like, son, I'm just going to show you something, so I need to bring you back, <laughs> I need to bring you back, and there we are, finding ourselves in our charging anxiety, <laughs> And the Lord just gives us, because the, the, the ha- what happened was also it was free of charge on that charging station. I don't know why, but it was. So I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The northern lights in Sweden. And I had had that uh, prayer in my heart. We want to see that. I've never seen it like this before. So it was so beautiful. God changes my anxiety for his beauty. <laughs> so God can do that for you. I don't know if you came here today and maybe you're charging, your battery is really running flat. You know, that could happen to anyone. But what do we do then? We go to the filling station, we go to the charging station, we come to the cross, we come and repent if we need to, we realize that he's not dead, he's alive, and we plug into the resurrection power, amen? Every Sunday is a resurrection Sunday, amen? And he can turn anxiety into beauty, Amen? And that's what he wants to do for you today. I feel in my spirit that there are people coming here today that they, they have anxiety. And I know what anxiety is, not just for charging. But I've been facing that in my life. But I also know how God can change anxiety to beauty. Resurrection power is here today to bring you out of darkness. Because God is a God of love and goodness. He wants to meet with you. He wants to do that every single Sunday. He wants to do that every time you open his book and sit down to listen to him. All right, so oil in your lamp. That's the only way we can do this journey. It's with the Holy Spirit, powered by the Spirit. Number two, Jesus says, good, wise stewards. From Matthew's Gospel 25. It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them. He entrusted them 
his, pop, his property. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? The Lord entrusts us his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, another one. But to each one he gave according to his ability. And I, I love that. That you are a person of ability. Sometimes we feel like we are a person of lack. We are a person of, that we, can, we don't have what it takes. But according to this, Jesus says you have the ability to finish your race. You have the ability to finish his race for your life. You have the ability to fulfill what the Lord called you to do in Shanghai. Amen. Did he give you that which you couldn't do? No. He gave you. Well, speaking in the language of faith, yes. Because we are not going to do this in our own strength. All right. But in terms of the the. Uh, responsibility he entrusted you is equivalent to the ability he gave you amen so the garden the size of your garden is the size of your ability when we end up uh, burnt out and locked in anxiety and depression I think sometimes we are just enlarging our gardens too far we are taking that which is not ours to take. We take responsibility for that which is not ours to take responsibility for. Are you with me? I'm speaking to someone. And that's the place when we learn, need to learn to say no so we can say yes. Someone in this room needs to say no so they can say yes. To the garden and the place that God has given you ability to care for. With oil in your lamp. Constantly we need to come back to him. And say I need you today Lord. I cannot do this without you. I need your presence. I need your oil in my lamp. And then we move into our garden. Our stewardship place. And we know that I have the ability in his presence and his power. To do what he's called me to do. To steward well in this present time. Because when he comes back, he will ask, what did you do what I gave you? Not what did you do what he gave someone else. It's specific, remember? Your garden is specific. It's something he did, created, prepared for you to take care of. Steward what he has entrusted. <clears throat> what has he entrusted to you, my friend? What talents do you have? Giftings, responsibilities, the things that he wants to turn from excited to beauty. He wants to do something beautiful through you that displays his glory. Okay, so three things. I, I, I can just simplify this, trying to make it, you know, preachable <laughs> on a Sunday. <laughs> uh, you, you have three things. And, and number one is to live the gospel. Live the gospel kind of life, the kingdom life on earth. As we pray in, in, in the Lord's prayer, we say, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. What is that? That is to live the gospel, is it not? It is to live as God's presence is real in our lives. It is to in, in, allow him to enter through our lives, his kingdom rule and reign. And in this portion of scripture... This is from Jeremiah, as you see. And he reminds us, and he reminds the people who are in bondage, in exile. Which means that they are not in the perfect circumstances. They are under uh, oppressors. You know, there is not full freedom. But there is some freedom. It's as in, in Sweden, you know. We have freedom to preach the gospel. But they are very limited in the workplace. Then rules comes, boom. If you begin to preach in, the gospel, in, in, in your workplace, there are rules coming in. Not full freedom, but there is freedom. Okay. Similar here, there are things, even in your setting, there are things that you can do in this exile sitting. But in that, God speaks to us clearly. Seek the welfare of Shanghai. Amen. You're called to seek the welfare, the prosperity, the peace of this city. With your life, with your gospel life. Gospel life releases the shalom, peace of heaven. 
Let thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. What is the kingdom of God? It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, right? So when, what's your name, mister? Levi? David. David. So David, David shows up. He's a son of God. He's an ambassador of the kingdom. He is connected to an invisible realm of the kingdom. The invisible realm of the kingdom is, is, is founded in righteousness, peace, and joy. So every David shows up and he lives the gospel lifestyle, it releases the righteousness of heaven. It releases the peace and the joy of heaven. Amen. How can he do that without oil in his lamp? Impossible. But with oil in his lamp, possible to release the very shalom of heaven, to prosper Shanghai through the power of the gospel in your life. And that will display the glory of God and that will draw people to the Father ultimately. Live the gospel. In this context, we also see this directs to the, the workers in exile. Those who are creators, those who are gardeners. They say, the, 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 the prophet says, plant gardens, build house, make babies. <laughs> he says, do not decrease, increase. Isn't that interesting? In exile, you would think, would you like to have kids in exile? In, 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 in that, well, that's what the prophet says. He says, plant gardens, build houses. Make sure that your sons and daughters get married. Have family. Increase. Do not decrease. And pray for the city. Pray for the place. So it prospers and, re- and shalom is released. Okay, so number two. Number one is live the gospel. Then second one is proclaim the gospel. Proclaim the gospel. Because Jesus says in in chapter 24, just before he gives us those parables, he tells us, well, the end time is going to be shaky. There will be pandemics, right? There will be earthquakes. There will be catastrophes. There will be many things coming. And you're like, is Jesus coming now? Is Jesus coming now? Well, be ready. That's, that's, That's the heart of the message. Jesus says, whether... I'm coming sooner or later. I want wise people in this age to live ready. I think that's the essence of what I believe the Lord is just trying to communicate. Live ready. Live awake. Guys, wake up. All right, Lord saying to us, live wisely. This is not a time to, to be, you know, going from the one thing to the other. This is a time to be sharp, my friends. This is a time to be wise, my friends. This is a time to come to the Lord and say, you need to fill me today. I need you to fill me with your oil today because I have a garden to take care of. And I will be determined and I will rise up in my garden and I will take my authority in my garden and I will use the keys in my garden and I will silence the the serpent in my garden and I will release kids in my garden. I will raise disciples in my garden. I will release the kingdom of heaven in my garden. Amen? Am I preaching to someone? I'm not here to yell at you. I'm just here to passionately <laughs> speak to you and, and, and hopefully hearts responding saying yeah Lord I want to be ready when you come and I want to be wise I want to live the gospel my life preaching the gospel I want to proclaim the gospel because this is the essence of what Jesus says what to do in this time of turmoil what to do when economy is, is, is lowering how can we turn this back well Jesus in the season preach tell Proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom has to be proclaimed to all people. All people. Then the end will come. So that's my end time um, analysis. <laughs> when will the end time come? Well, we'll all have heard the gospel. Well, you can think about that. But to me, it tells, preach the gospel, Paul. Continue proclaiming the gospel because that's what I have entrusted you to do. Number three in this time is to make disciples. I think he has entrusted us not just to preach the gospel or make converts, but he is asking us to disciple them and teach them everything Jesus taught. Matthew 28, 18. So he's asking us to, to take people like, show you the 11-year-old. <laughs> Who's, who's pulling us in your world. His name or her name is different. 
but someone who Father is drawing. And the drawing comes like a drawing on you. It's like an open door. Someone is there ready to get to know Jesus. And the question is, is there a discipler around? Is there someone who can take someone on board and journey with them so they can become a disciple? Right? That takes spiritual fathership and motherhood and fatherhood, sorry, and, 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 and friendship. And it takes relationship. It takes time. We are entrusted with to do that, exactly that. Okay, so my, my last point in, in, in the preparation from chapter 25. So there were three point, under points to, to the, what's been entrusted to us. To live the gospel, proclaim the gospel, make disciples. And um, number three now, serving the poor and the needy. The last story Jesus gives us, Matthew's Gospel 25, and highlighting verse 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And from verse, verse 40, the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it. To me, uh, Teresa, can I have the towel? Please? <laughs> Sorry, it's hot in Shanghai today. <laughs> it's quite hot in Sweden as well <laughs> nowadays. Um, so I think it's interesting if you if you read the whole story. Jesus, this is judg Judgment Day. On Judgment Day, in this story, Jesus is not asking us, how many did you bring into the kingdom? He's asking, how did you serve the needy around you? Hmm. How did we meet and minister, minister, minister to the people of need in our, in our world? And I'm so happy to hear how this church is focusing on that and it's so generous. And, and I said in the morning, I hope the generosity of the church will inspire us all individually to see this aspect. How we can be ready for his return. How? By being generous, being, seeing the need around us, to seeing the, the stranger, to seeing the naked, seeing the thirsty. Whatever need you have, I think... In our minds to be ready, I think God show us the need of our community. See, let me have eyes, let my heart be a merciful heart that can see and I empathize with those around us. I think, I mean, we're talking about the return of the king and he asking, did you do that? He, not how, how, how did you prosper your business? Right? Well, he, he's saying, you know, how you, the thing is entrusted, the, the talents, it's not either or. But this is so important to Jesus that he brings it to the very judgment day in this story. To me, I don't think we get into heaven by good deeds. I think there is only one way <laughs> to be secured and it's by the blood of the Lamb. Is by faith in what he did here. But faith in what he did here generates faith that is going through love to the needy around us. True faith in the cross brings true love to the world around us. And Jesus will ask us, how did we do with that? So I think this is just a, a reminder. This is basic teaching in the kingdom. This is not high, extra, vagant revelation. But this is to bring us to the words of Jesus. To prepare us for his return. Having oil in our lamps. Being good stewards of our gardens. And be ready to serve the needy around us. To be ready to be there for them. This is important to our master. This is important in the end times. This is important. When we face him, he will ask us. He will look for this. So maybe some of these things has to get higher priority in our hearts and lives. Maybe. Can we stand up together, please? We are coming soon to a close. Holy Spirit. And, and I would like to just start with, with a simple invitation. Because maybe there, is people, there are people in the room. 
and you've gone astray. We all have done that in our lives. We have all gone astray. We have all followed our own ways, our own highways. But then God showed up. And He's begin to draw our hearts. There is a reason why you're here today. You're not here by accident. You're not here just because your friend brought you or just showed up. I think you're here by purpose. Because the Father is drawing you. And especially if you're on your own way and not His way. Repentance means changing the direction of your life. It means to turn around. And maybe there's someone here today who needs to turn around from their ways to His ways. Say, Father, forgive me. I didn't realize. <laughs> maybe you were so stubborn like I. I wanted it my way until he showed up and he began to work on my heart and he draw me back to himself. Maybe there's someone here today who just need to do that. Say, Jesus, I want to receive you. I want to receive what you did on the cross for me, that you died in my place. But praise God, death couldn't hold you. You rose again. And I want to have that resurrection life today. New life in my life. So I want to make this invitation just to take the first step. Pastor Daniel will, will continue soon just to guide you further. But today, are you here? Are you feeling in your heart? I need to respond. I want to take this new, new life direction. I want to follow Jesus. You can lift your hand where you're standing. I may pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. The more people here need to just respond. God bless you. Can you lift it high so maybe the ushers just can see you? Yeah, you too. Bless you, bless you, bless you. So many hands up, responding to the love of God, drawing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is wonderful because this means new life in your life. This means new life, the kingdom life, God's love is entering your heart and doing something beautiful. We cannot do this ourselves. This is not a work of man. I can not do this. No one can do this. But Lord can do this. So I just pray now, Father, that you continue your work. I pray that they will meet with the love of the, of, of the Father in such a powerful way. That it will never be the same again. That you will turn their lives around. That you forgive their sins. That they can commit their lives fully into your hands. So they don't have to fight this fight alone. So they don't have to fight this darkness alone. your hands I'm, I'm just going to pray for someone more before I leave over to Pastor Daniel and, and he will take you on I, I just want to pray a short prayer also for you who feel like I have I empty your battery I, I run flat I, I need oil in my in my in my lamp so if you're here today and I just can pray short prayer for you you can stand where you are and just lift your hands before you I need oil in my lamp really every Sunday is a refilling filling station but I just want to make it possible to, to for you to respond to the message today so Holy Spirit you're here and I speak just over my brothers and sisters today fill them Lord fill them Lord Jesus says whoever asks of me whoever asks of the Father of the Spirit he will certainly give <laughs> the Spirit so come Holy Spirit over my brothers and sisters, refuel them, restrengthen them, quicken them, renew them. In the name of Jesus, in regards to their family life, in their marriage, I speak life into your marriage. In the name of Jesus, regards as parents, I pray for new wisdom, strength in your parenting. I pray for your work life in the name of Jesus. I thank you for new oil in your lamp. In the name of Jesus, that there will be new strength. That you will wake up tomorrow in the Monday morning. You will have new fire. You will have new oil in your lamp. You will not run on low battery. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit will charge you up. That the Holy Spirit will fill you up. That will quicken you. I pray also for a new love for your workplace. I pray for new love for your workmates. I pray for new love for your boss. In Jesus' name, I pray for those who are business people, business owner in this room. New, new oil in your lamp. New oil in your machinery. New oil in your business. I pray favor and grace over you right now. In Jesus' name. 
You are not alone. You're not alone. Receive that by faith. And continue to stay in His presence and His Word. Because He's God with you. He's God for you. And He loves you. The first call by Pastor Paul is actually for those who want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. So uh, if you have done so, if you have raised your hands, uh, will, will you say this prayer after me? Because the Bible says that we need to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Saviour. If that's you, we just say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross of Calvary. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart today. Be my Lord and Saviour in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to say two things before I let you go. We are definitely living in the end times. Uh, we do not know when Jesus will come back. But um, when He comes back, He wants to find us doing His work. It's not about our job, although our job is a form of worship unto Him. But what are we doing to the people around us? The garden that He mentioned about. I believe that Shanghai is going through a time of visitation by the Lord. A time of visitation means God is visiting the people of Shanghai now. Why? Because economically, not all industries have recovered. There are many, uh, like I say, you know, on the 7th, 8th and 9th of uh, September, we're going to have this Leaders for Leaders conference where people have burned out after three years of uh, COVID and uh, they, they are struggling to recover in terms of their business and their job. But how can they continue? They might not be naked, they might not be hungry, but they have lost their purpose and joy in their life. And you and I have been placed there to encourage them, to reach out to them and bring them towards the gospel. The 6th of September is the day to invite them. And the other thing that I'd like to encourage you is, it is wonderful to be in China during this period. There are some people who say, this coming century is the Asian century. It's not about being proud to be Asians, not belittling the Westerners, but what I'm saying is, in the end times, I was joking with some of my pastors from the West, I said, in the 80s, you don't come and help the church in China. There will be a day where the Chinese missionaries will be knocking at the door of your country. I can tell you, the Chinese pastors in China are very rooted in the Word. Very strong preachers. And with the coming Asian centuries, with the money and the resources and all that's happening in Asia, it will fund the end time harvest. And you and I are part of this initiation. So it's going to be exciting times. So don't give up living in China and in Shanghai because God has a greater purpose for us than for us to just make money because we live to glorify His name. Father, I give you praise and thanks that we live to glorify Your name. And I pray that, Father, you help us to live circumspectively, intentionally, to glorify your name wherever you have placed us. And we give you praise and thanks that you have placed us here in Shanghai. That, Father, there are many Christians in China. Almost 8% of this population in the entire China are Christians. And you have raised them up for a purpose, for world mission, Father. And we thank you that we can be a part of them reaching out to them, encouraging them and cheering them on for the last lap before Jesus returns. So we give you praise and thanks that Father, you have brought us here for such a time as this and maybe be found faithful doing whatever you have called us to do if Jesus so happened to come back during our time. So Father, I just commit everyone into your hands and as they leave this place, may your presence continue to minister to them. May your grace sustain them May your blessing go with them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.